and we are live with episode three of the Intern Pod, featuring myself, Parker Harrison, me, Will Cockleisure, uh, me, Landon Dunn, and me, Daniel Shee. They keep inviting me back, so here <laughs> I am again. Our guest star, Daniel Shee. We've been trying to get him in here for the first two. He keeps evading us for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, he wanted to see the numbers first before yeah. he got too invested with us. Well, the problem is two he's got... Two episodes down, numbers are great, you are doing great, so here I am. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, you. well, you've got, you know, ESPN and Barstool, and everyone's calling trying to get Daniel Shee in, but the intern pod got him in here, so we beat, uh, we beat everyone to the chase. But uh, it's been a minute, again, two weeks since Almost our last I know. episode. Um, we're bound to get a weekly episode in. Um, eventually, we will. Did we go? No, we were two weeks in between yeah. our last one, right? Yep. Yeah, and I think it might have been more than two weeks. Yeah, well, I mean, everything just keeps popping up, I yeah. mean, pushing us back, but that's okay, because... As long as the hogs keep going strong, yeah, things are uh, things are looking up. So uh, let's kind of get into some stuff that we've missed over. I guess I guess first maybe we should start with um, Daniel Shee introduction. Yeah, uh, Daniel, you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure. I usually hide behind a byline. That's uh, old print slang for you see my name at the top of the article and never see my face. I write for All Hogs, which is affiliated with Sports Illustrated here, and then a lot of people know who Andrew Hutchinson is. Whenever he's dealing with wife and kids, I also write for Best of Arkansas Sports, and they keep inviting me back here, so I guess I'm sort of a semi-honorary member of Natty State Sports. Right. He's like the... The, the extended family. Right. Like, yeah. you invite him every once in a while. You're like the second cousin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's here with us today. We're, we're happy to have him. And uh, yeah, boys, let's get into this a little bit. Uh, we missed some baseball. What do we miss? Just uh, a big series yeah. win at South Carolina. Series win versus Florida. And I mean, yeah. Couple, hogs keep us. on winning. A couple midweek games in there. So uh, yeah, let's dig into that South Carolina series because that was definitely uh, an interesting one. We don't win that game without Hagan. No. Yeah, a hundred percent. And um, we don't win the game against Florida without Hagen. I feel like that's every series opener since. Yeah, it is right. The beginning of time, it, especially with Arkansas, because I mean we've had the luxury of some studs Friday night guys, right. and I mean Blaine Knight went undefeated. Uh, Isaiah Campbell followed him up the next year, losing one game, I believe. Um, we've been really, really spoiled at Arkansas with that 100%. Friday night guy. It's weird because, and I think Daniel can probably relate, like we're, we're writing about these weekend series and the Friday night games, no. and it's hard to think of anyone more valuable to not only the pitching staff but the team than Hagen Smith because it seems like maybe Thursday or Friday, every single time, there's just not run, there's not any run support with Hagen. Mm -hmm. It feels like the offense kind of just goes dry when he's out there. And so the fact that he keeps winning these games and putting good teams down is really impressive. And he did it again at South Carolina. Um, just what did you guys think of that series as a whole? I'm not, I'm not willing to jump ship and, like, freak out about the bats. Um, I still think – They're going to get hot. Yeah, I, so I still think we are in I'll perfect – Really? Yeah. You, you, think, you think it's time to be really concerned? I really do. I, I, I just think that, you know – we, we see, like, you knew this offense coming into the year was not going to be great. You were really a lot, like, you were going in hoping that Jason Jones would take over the left corner in, corner spot when we talked to Dave in the preseason. That never happened. I don't think I've ever seen, well, I don't want to say I've never seen, but it is incredibly long to still have a revolving door in left field, and then Kendall Diggs at your other corner outfield spot is like, I, I, like I'm sure everyone's mentioned it. I think Tom Murphy said it on the radio as well. Like, if they don't get it going, I don't really see a path. If he doesn't get it going, I don't see a path for them to Omaha, even out of the super regional. Maybe who wow. knows? But who do you think the outfield should be? I mean, you have to play digs until otherwise said. Right. Uh, my, if he's healthy. My outfield is left field Edmondson, center Holt, right field Diggs. That's how it should be the rest of the year. Really? In my opinion. Well, I think after this past weekend, I think 
Holt solidified himself right. and as Holt a has to be starter. Peyton, the Peyton rest Holt of the way. is the center fielder. I don't. Yeah. I think he's locked and that up. You can maybe at the end of the game, ninth inning, put Wilmsmeyer back in center. See, yeah. Holt left. Keep Diggs in right, just for defensive purposes. Not well, for hitting. and I don't. Th- and I don't think. I think Wilmsmeyer is the perfect guy. Guy gets a base knock or a walk. You know, a catcher. Thank God we have a, abundance of them. You pitch run them. We have a guy coming up. If it, we need that run, we need a scoring or we need to score that inning. Wilms Meyer is the perfect guy to, you know, make moves accordingly. Right. Yeah. But some something I did want to bring up, Daniel. You say you're you're already slamming the panic button over there. Not not necessarily slamming the panic button, but I, I guess a lot closer than you guys are. Right. But like the lid, if the panic button is under a, a plastic lid, you've taken yeah, the lid I've off. I've taken the lid off. Yeah. Really? Okay. So you're you're debating. My hand it. is hovering. Your over hand is the hovering. Oh, so I mean, it's, it's totally understandable. Right. One thing I do want to uh, bring up here because I, I found this a little bit shocking. So we think back to that 2021 team. I don't know about you guys. I think of that team as being offensively proficient enough. Mm-hmm. So, and, and batting average, of course, is a very subjective stat. Like, it's not, it's not the be-all, end-all of statistics, right? There are six Razorbacks on this year's team with higher batting averages than the leading batting average, which is Brady Slavin's on that 21 team. Brady Slavin's led the Razorbacks with a 284 batting average. There are six hogs hitting higher than that right now yeah. on this team. So, yes, like, I feel like... Like Daniel said, maybe it's time to start taking the lid off. There, I think there are guys who can hit. Is my point. I think I think that team was filled with timely hitting. Right. So I think that the bats are better this year, one without a doubt. But I think we're just missing those timely hits right now. I mean, with that first game, that Friday night game, scores two one. There, in my opinion, I think we should have scored five or six runs out of that, but doesn't work out. I think. This year, I think we're one click away from just Holt being in the lineup every day. Certain guys just staying put. Diggs still coming back. Um, I think we're one step away from those timely timely hits right. coming going forward. The series against Alabama is what scared me. Yeah, we left so many on base. It, it is in their defense a hard place to play and a good team. Yeah, I mean we haven't won there in years. I remember yeah. two years ago we lost. That was like the last series of the year. Nolan, we won the first game. Lost the next two. You should not be getting shut out, though, by a true freshman. No. There's no reason for that to happen. His best of the year was like three and a third, and he goes eight innings that day. Right. What, the, the other big difference is that 2021 team had a lot of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had Slavens, had 14 homers. Robert Moore had 16 home runs. Uh, Wallace had 14. Christian Franklin had 13. He had six guys. All, well, Charlie Welch had eight, so you almost had seven guys with double-digit home runs. This year, I mean, Daniel, who do you think is going to get to double digits this year? Well, Al- I mean, obviously, Aloy is there. You really think anybody else is going to get there? I think Stovall. I think Stovall gets, I think Stovall gets Stovall to ten. I think I think I think Ben gets it. McLaughlin, I think Ben's at seven. Ben's at seven, and Stovall are at seven. I think I think Ben is such a timely hitter. Anyway, I don't think Kendall Diggs gets there. He needs no. four more with the shoulder. I think he's lost a, lo- a lot of pop. Um, That's fine. I'd rather have a base hit. That scores an RBI base hit. That, yeah. yeah. Well, I want a timely. And this may be unpopular. I could actually see Jared Sprague Lock getting on a little bit of a power stroke. Yeah. He's at six. He needs four more. He's starting yeah. to swing the bat really, if he gets really like, good. If he gets yeah. like one against Mississippi State, maybe one against Kentucky, one in Hoover and one the postseason, then he's at 10. Like that could happen. There's a path there. But yeah, like this team just doesn't have a lot of power. And I think the more they embrace. <laughs> The small ball, not even maybe the small ball because the slugging percentages aren't horrible, but embrace the fact that you can't hit the ball over the wall every time. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Which I think that's more of a um, coaching situation. Uh, I've always been kind of vocal on the whole uh, Nate Thompson. Well, you're fully on the Nate Thompson see you later. I'm not not necessarily see you later. Adapt. Um, I have... I've seen it time and time again where, yeah, congrats. We can hit the ball over the ballpark or, you know, hit it to Saturn. But what, is that, what has that done for us late in the season when it is a two-to-one game? You know, um, sometimes swallowing the pride, hitting a sack bunt, 
I think is the needed situation instead of overswinging for a ground ball double play. Well, back to Parker's point about 2021, the batting averages being lower. I think that that's kind of the biggest reason why I'm maybe closer to the panic button than a lot of people. It's just that you don't expect scoring runs in the SEC to be easy. That's understandable. But it just seems like, especially in the weekend series, even on Sunday serves, like every single time they score a run, it is just so much hard work for this offense. Right. Like nothing comes easy. You you kind of assume that the first time through the order is going to be right. really, really sketchy, which is kind of what happened at Alabama, and it just never – they didn't figure turn, them out. Never turn the corner, and you just you're just really afraid that the the two to one game. And this is what I was talking about with Andrew when he said, you know, it's hard to envision. They've lost what? It's it's two, right? Just the two games at home. James Madison. Yeah, James and, Madison and Florida. And the most recent Florida game. It's very hard to imagine they've lost like what two out of 30, 30 what are games they played at home, and mm-hmm. you're expecting them to lose two out of three, but. Then again, the 2-1 games that they've been winning consistently, mm-hmm. if it turns to a 2-1 loss th- through no fault of Hagen, if he goes seven innings, give right. up two runs, they lose 2-1, to one, then you're really behind the eight ball because you will have used probably Gackle to try and keep the game close there or thereabouts. And then you're really right. hoping the bats turn the corner overnight down one nothing. So what's your lineup that you think should be the year? Like you need, you have to pick one lineup, not not necessarily in order, but like. But who's playing where? Who's playing where? Well, because I've got mine. I think the outfield: Edmondson, Holt, Diggs. First to third around the infield: uh, McLaughlin, Stovall, Alloy. Spray Glot behind the dish, White, and then DH. I mean, you have to put Nolan Souza, right? He's, yeah. he's been yeah, too good right not that's, to. The, the that pr- should be it. That's nothing. Is that, is that where you were going? That's right. I, mean, I, I don't going. think we're really reinventing the wheel. I will say I would not be surprised at some point if he put Wilmsmeyer in there if just nobody in left field could figure it out. I think at some point he may reach the point of no return where he realizes one of our outfield spots might just hit under 200 for the rest of yeah. the year. I might as well have Wilmsmeyer in there for defense for all nine innings, and you'll just obviously slide Wilmsmeyer over to center and probably hold to Wilms- left. Wilmsmeyer is our, like, Gregory this year. You know, yeah. he's not going to bat. He's not going to bat 250. Um, but, I mean, Zach Gregory had a lot of clutch hits late in the season, and he was like the only guy that could hit. It felt like those later games, his his last season. So here here's my thing on time, Ty Wilmsmeyer. My comp for him is Braden Webb in 2021. So you, you think of Braden Webb, you think of the 22 Braden Webb where there's a lot of power. It's hitting for decent average. People forget 2021 Braden Webb hit like 150. Yeah. Uh, Ty Wilmsmeyer reminds me a lot of him because the defense is elite. They're both really good athletes. Um, and you kind of just have to have them in there, at least from time to time, just for defense. But, Daniel, you you are an advocate for Edmondson. Now is that in left? Because the problem with left field is if you put Ross Lovich out there, you feel like maybe he's a defensive liability. Do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but you know, because he's hit my. I say that to say that. What just the error that he made where the ball like clunked off his head, or I can't remember what happened. <laughs> That's not a shining moment. <laughs> but my, the point I was really trying to make is that in SEC play, Roslovich is actually hitting two fifty, which is like fifth best, fifth best on the team, and Will Edmondson's batting one eighty eight. I mean, we're hitting 233 as a team right. in SEC play. Right. So um, I guess my question is, what is more valuable? Because I think you have to have Peyton Holt out there or somewhere, right? So assuming Diggs is good to go, you have Diggs and Holt, so you're, you just have that one spot. So my question to you is, what's more valuable, the defense or the offense? 
I think it's Edmondson just because I think, I mean, tell me with the straight face that really Roslovich is, well, what's the difference? Like 70, just math on the fly, that's like 70, 60, 62 points? 62 points. Not a math major, good grief. 62 points. You really think Roslovich is worth 62 more points than Will Edmondson with the bat? Well, Roslovich is also getting on base at a 429 clip. Is he really? In SEC well, How many at-bats is that? Because he hasn't gotten that many at-bats. Uh, he has 28. Edmondson has 32. So comparable at-bats. Comparable at -bats. numbers. But, again, would you, would you judge a player 32 at-bats into the season? So what I would do here is that – here's the thing. Hagen Smith has to get run support. Yeah. He just has to. It's so important that first game to get his confidence and the team's confidence – going and you can't you know if Arkansas comes out and scores five runs in the first four innings it's a completely different series because then the offense has some mojo rolling Hagen Smith is, is pitching with confidence maybe you need less of Gabe Gackle I just feel like it's really important so maybe game one you go with Lovich just to give you a little bit of offensive boost but that's just my thoughts Will what do you think I don't know like it just the time of hitting needs to come and I think Edmondson has got to be left. But I was just here looking just a second ago. Did you know Wilmsmeyer pitched at Missouri? I didn't yeah, know. I I had heard about that, but I heard he was leaving all that behind when he committed. Yeah. Like he, he didn't was, have a terrible ERA in two years. He had two. He. Two, four, hey, uh, if 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 things really go to craps today, I don't know what the rule is, but if things really go to craps for today's game, just for context, we're recording this after they used what eight pitchers last night. Right. Yeah, he might. They might have to get. Yeah, really, really ben creative last today. Year too. Yeah, McLaughlin. Could, I could see McLaughlin <laughs> tossing a tossing an inning or two just for fun. That'd be awesome. Uh, okay, so obviously at South Carolina, you feel like things went well, right? Like. You win yeah. the series. Yeah. That's a team, and that's a South Carolina team that is on track right now to host a regional. Like they're, oh yeah. I mean, D one baseball has them in as a host right now. Yeah. So that I mean, that's a really good series win. The Florida series, I honestly felt was much more worrisome because at South Carolina you're yeah. scoring runs. And I Florida's think Florida's not very good. I right. think I think we got to get out of this doubleheader nonsense. Right. I mean, it's, if we can play a one, two, three day series. I think the team looks better on paper. I think I, those double headers are just such toss ups. I mean, you already it's know you're you already know it's going to be a weird pitching day. It's so hard to win two games. Right. Yeah, it is just fundamentally difficult right. to win two games back to back on the same day, and also fundamentally very difficult to sweep a four game series, which they showed early in the year against James Madison. Right. Uh, there are some things scheduling wise that you just are just hard, and that's one of them. And unfortunately, it's happened to us a lot this year. Yeah, I thought our game plan for Flor or for Jack Calion was amazing. I mean, Except I think we should have walked him when he had the bases loaded. Yeah, that's that Adley Rutschman run. treatment. Um, and I've been saying that. Like, can you imagine the conversation? Because he said post game DBH that he thought about it. Like, can you imagine just like the internal dialogue in his head? Like wanting to walk because they were down. I mean, one, how we two up losing at the four, time? Was it four they, one? They were down. I know they were down at least a run at the time. Yeah. What was the final score? Uh, nine five. Nine five. So, Florida had scored seven through the first four. So I think it was four to one at that point. Right. Was, I think I think no, they were just three due to one. To, three I think they were to due walk. to break out. Um. Yes, you're right. It was three. Walked, well, yes. would have walked in the fourth round, which, which I mean, you can't keep a straight face. No. And do that. No. no matter how much you how much you try. I mean, I, I can imagine him saying that it is the probably statistically the right thing to do, but you 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 just can't morally can't keep a straight face. In hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Like of course we're looking back at it now and be like, oh, he should have done that. But then what if you walked? That him is in still there? probably the most impressive grand slam I've ever seen. Yeah, he, he barely hit the ball. Just Barely touched the ball and it. Yeah, that dude is crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Florida series, it's hard to be like too concerned when you win an SEC series, especially against, you know, maybe program. Florida's having an underwhelming year, but it's still Florida. Like, you know, yeah. it'd be like if we beat Alabama in football, but they were four and five, you know, it's still Alabama. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and then 
you've got Kendall Diggs struggling. Obviously, we know he's been kind of hurt with the shoulder issue. Uh, Some of it's in his head, I think. Yeah. I, th- I think so, too. He looks lost at the plate a little bit. I also think I think he's going to be one of those guys, like, season's over, win or lose, he's going to have some sort of surgery. Um, right. I just feel like there's something going on away from not even the injury at this point. Yeah, I think a little bit of it is he's in his head. Uh, but, yeah, he's – He's on a downward spiral, that average. But. Daniel, what's your Kendall Diggs outlook? Oof. I mean, pray? I, I, I don't <laughs> know. Pray. I mean, Are you this, suggesting that Kendall Diggs should just pray? That's what I, you're saying? No, no not, not pray. At Close the his play, eyes, pray just, the swing. Just prob- yeah. You know, I, 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 it feels like that's what he's doing. But, but I, think, I, think what he, I think he needs like a blooper. You know, he needs like a blooper to just get on off the handle of his bat. Yeah. Just, just to get on base. Just to get on base, exactly. Because right now it's like, and that that was the biggest problem with the lineup is that like a lot of people, if you went into the year and said, if you need a hit with a runner in scoring position, who do you want at the plate? It's almost probably unanimous, unanimously Kendall Diggs. Mm-hmm. So and, I remember one of the scrimmages he hit it one off the batter's off Hagen. Right. Yep. Then he told him, he's like, don't worry, that won't happen ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's – I wanted to kind of look ahead. Obviously, we still have three weekends left. So we go at A&M to end it. We're, we're at Kentucky this weekend. Here at A&M. Right. Hoover. So, which I would, wouldn't mind going 0-2 in Hoover. Coming home, getting the rest. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to just accept defeat. Like and, and Dave's not going to do that, yeah, unfortunately. Dave's not going to lay down. Um, now, I could see us getting the Hoover and, like, Colin Fisher throws a game. Well, I think – I would not throw Hagen there. I, th- I would. I, w- I would – I wouldn't even necessarily start him. I would give some sort of relief. Yeah. I want not, him I want him, yeah, okay. I want him. to at least pick up a ball and step on the mound for – even if it's one inning. Also, we don't know if Colin Fisher's going to be ready by Hoover or yeah. not. He's – Though by be last, oh, last night was, was yeah last night's probably not a good was not probably the worst injury report that we've got from Dave really? all year you you weren't there last I night. I wasn't That's there you went home so Hunter Dietz is done for the year mm-hmm. he I didn't see that I before. don't really like no one really knows what happened with him and I'm not even gonna dare to begin to speculate and Colin Fisher I mean it just if I if I if you made me bet, I doubt he pitches again this year. Really? Really? I just actually, well, there's he, there's no more he, midweek he's a freshman, games. Freshman, there's no more midweek games. Like if you are you really gonna throw him straight back into the pressure cooker when he comes back? I mean, yeah. Oof, I mean, like if he's if he's ready, you would think that if he was close to ready for this weekend. They'd at least want to test something in the midweeks, or at least he'd be throwing right now, which he's not. Right. And that leaves what? Mississippi State and A&M? Yeah. Are you really going to throw him? Yeah. Like, if he's ready, the A&M weekend series, and you have a like a little window, unless they're just getting their yeah. teeth kicked in, which could be very possible, which we'll probably eventually get to, that, you know, the big bad wolves – are so waiting. You are a, a big proponent of the Texas A&M. Well, what did I tell you when George, when George, you can back me up on this. I'm not just yeah. making this up. No. When Georgia took that nine nothing lead in the top of the first, I looked at you and said what? You said this ain't over. Basically. Yeah. You were like you Yeah, I mean you flat out said that A&M was going to come back and win. Now, I don't think you knew that they were going to come no, back and I did run not, rule I them. I did not call that they were going to come back and run rule. That was insane. <laughs> That was the, and we were sitting in the press box watching the game because it was much more interesting than what was happening in the Florida Arkansas game. Yes. much more interesting because if, yeah, A&M's lineup is ridiculous. I, I'll have to see. Uh, Daniel, I think you can agree. That I'll have to see what we do these next two weeks, but I could very easily see us getting swept. We're oh, not going to yeah. get swept, but we're going to drop. We'll drop the. It's a Thursday, Friday. We're going to win the Friday game, lose Thursday. If Saturday. Hagen doesn't get run support, we're getting swept. That's the only game you can win. There, we're talking about Kentucky or A&M? A&M. A&M. 
Oh. Hagen, the, the Thursday night game. I'm more worried Hagen. about Kentucky than I am A&M. I'm not really? worried. I'm not worried yeah. about Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky scares me. I, I think that is the perfect I, – I didn't even – I did not have us losing to um, the series to Bama. I 100% had us losing the series to um, Kentucky on the road. I thought that was going to be our first possibly sweep. Um, I don't think Kentucky's as good as they – No. And, and, yeah. I don't, and I don't necessarily think they're just A&M lineup-wise or whatnot, but we're not putting up, we're not putting up runs. Yeah. So it's like – they have good. They have a good pitching staff. They'll be fine. It's whether or not we can put up runs on them. Yeah, those are some early games too. Five thirty on Friday, one o'clock on Saturday, and noon on Sunday. So let's yeah, let's look at Kentucky a little bit. Because um, offensively, it feels a little bit similar to Alabama. No. Yeah. Um, there's basically two guys hitting three seventy. <laughs> uh, and Nick Lopez and Ryan Walshmitt. Then you've got three other guys hitting above 300. And then there's a pretty big drop-off after that. The The bottom of the lineup is, you know, manageable. I, I think Kentucky's can be handled, and I think we will. A&M, I'm with Daniel. A&M scares me. A&M terrifies me. Oh, yeah. I think that's a sweep for them. I think if you win, I think if you win one game in College Station, you should be content. If you win the series, we should probably like throw a party or something. I don't want to win that series. You don't want to. I want a humbling what? loss before postseason. Like, I don't. But I, you can say that about years past. But I think this team doesn't exactly fire like that. Like they don't. They don't need the kick in the butt to yeah. like get them going. Yeah. You know they're going into every game expecting to win but if they don't they have a different ad- they don't have the well crap what happened you know yeah. they have a all right we'll handle this tomorrow attitude yeah. and i think that's the difference because like being from arkansas i would have said the exact same thing had this roster not be what it is because every single year it's like okay we're a little too good and a little too good and then boom we get that kick in the butt and we don't respond well to it. I think this completely different situation this year. So something I wanted to do, let's let's kind of look forward to the postseason. And it's maybe a little early for that. But Daniel, your A and M Aggies, your hometown team, being from Houston. Close yes. enough. Close Speaking enough, of which, right? I will be there at the a m series. So if they get swept and get just absolutely blown out of the water, it'll be a very interesting experience. But Yeah. Uh, so A&M right now projected as the overall one seed. Arkansas projected as the two. Basically, I think what you're looking at is whoever wins that head-to-head is probably going to be the number one. Mm-hmm. So D1 Baseball and did maybe their... Maybe we do need to lose it. I don't want to be the one seed. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> uh D1 Baseball released their Nerdcast this morning, which basically breaks down the field of 64. They haven't released the exact matchups yet, and we may have a graphic for this, uh, but basically you're looking at Arkansas being the two seed, most likely, unless... They, re- they released the projected they did? Uh, regionals and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, they have us paired up with... Um, can, I, can I take a guess first? Oh, yeah, go for it. Daniel, have you seen it yet? Oh, I've not seen it. Would you like to take a guess? I mean, yours will be much more informed because I don't know if we've I'm gonna touched go for on three. this on the intern podcast, and I'm going to go on a rant, but the amount of college baseball you watch is slightly I don't concerning. watch that much. Well, the amount of college baseball that you know, right? I think Fair. far probably outweighs the three of us combined. I don't know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... No. I, based off what they were saying this morning, I would think that the two seed would be Louisiana, three seed Texas, four seed Euler or Omaha, but I'm not sure if Euler is still a projected oh winner. My God. So in the four seed, they got Euler. Euler. Okay. Um, Louisiana Tech comes in at the three, and then Oklahoma State. I would love Oklahoma State to roll no. in here. Yeah, I love I would, it. I would too. I don't. I'm I will, not I, them. I'm thinking about game two of the season. Oh, yeah. I'm loving it. And I don't think. A lot of college baseball people are super high on 
the pokes. Well, that's, because, that's what scares me is they're not hot on them. They're yeah. flying under the radar. I don't but know. I feel, like, I feel like that's a that's a low two seed. It feels no, like. but you can talk yourself think into thinking of whoever the two seed is. It's not like very It's good. the worst two seed right. or the best two seed. It's like this is the worst two seed we could have drawn. You know, yeah. in hindsight, it's always 2020, but, you know. Yeah. So last year, TCU was the two, right? And then yeah. Arizona was the three. And yeah. TCU came TCU in. TCU felt like off the bat was a TCU hard draw. TCU was the right. us of 2022. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know. We'll see. And I, I honestly, obviously, we're still. And they're projecting, they're projecting South Carolina to be that 15th seed to where yeah. the winner of that would. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be scared. Um. No, I wouldn't be scared. Of Honestly, I'd be more. Here. I'd be more afraid that right now. They have them paired up with uh, Virginia as a two seed. I'd be more afraid of Virginia coming out of that regional than I would be South Carolina. They have Virginia projected as a two seed. Mm-hmm. Really, I'm surprised. That that's a really good two seed. Yeah. Um, if that were to come to fruition, like, I think Virginia would win that. Honestly, and obviously there's are a better team. Still three series left, and a lot yeah. of a lot of shifting. It's all will speculation be done. at this yes. point. But that would be a wild two seed coming oh, yeah. out of. Yeah. Columbia. So just just some fun stuff to look at there, but um, I guess we'll we'll move on from baseball for a second because we spent the first thirty minutes talking about it. Hmm. Uh, just a little bit of football news. Will you want to take this one over? Dominique Johnson enters the transfer portal. I really liked him in twenty twenty one. I thought he was our best running back over Rocket. But. For a guy that tore his ACL in two different legs, stud. Like yeah, I loved it, and it's. That makes me think that uh, Brendan Russell is probably locking up that spot. Um, Dude, he's a dog. He's a beast. Has that power runner and and yeah, and I don't know if you and if anyone hasn't seen Braylon Russell, that watch that dude that. is a beast yeah. mode times two. Um, he's going to be a stud, and the fact that we we get him for a couple of years is going to be awesome. But so uh, yeah, Dominique Johnson out, obviously good memories. We here at the intern pod wish him wish him well on his journey. Yeah. Um, so I guess now on to basketball. On to basketball, man. It's been eventful since we've when we last recorded. Who it was just Big Z, right? That was the yeah. only we we were awesome we were talking uh, we were talking about Carter, Boogie the potential of Boogie and Carter, and Carter Knox. Knox. Yeah. So obviously Carter Knox and Boogie, as well as Billy Richmond, all committed. Um, are they all? Composite five stars. I know Boogie and Richmond are right. Uh, most most of them are all five. Um, it, some it, you don't ever know what what thing right. to look at. Yeah. Uh, they have, I think they have on twenty four. They're all five stars, but uh, twenty four seven. But um, some huge gets. Right, and then Jonas Adu like really flew. Daniel, I don't know if you noticed this too. Like, I felt like in the media world, like the Adu news just really went under the radar. No, um, I mean, I, like compared to like to how big of a deal it is. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, you know, everyone was after John L. Davis, right? But but I think the Adu the Adu the Adu news I think kind of caught everybody. Off guard. Maybe that was, was it. Was he the one? Was he the one that canceled? Yeah, he canceled a bunch his of visits. Visit right. To I UNC. think a lot of people assumed that he was going to take all those visits, and it was going to take a little bit more time. Right. Before he ultimately decided where he wanted to go, but you know that that's the thing is who who was it? I'm sure I'm sure you would know, but the names escaping me off the top of my head where someone committed to Kentucky without without ever taking a visit. Right? Oh, Recently? Let me look this up. Like this transfer cycle? Yes. Oh, boy. Was it the Garrison dude? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. He Brandon, yeah, C4? he didn't take a visit. Well, um, he, was, he, he was here. He was at the right. he, C4. He, he, he took a visit to like four other schools Good spot. and committed to Kentucky without even taking a visit. So it's just, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. That's, well, that's the way the, it's the money falls. Right, exactly. Right, so... And then you get John L. Davis. Like, that was... That's huge. That's the boom goes to dynamite moment for John Calipari. It's not going to get any better than yeah. John L. Davis. Like, that dude is the real deal. Probably, Curtis, what is consensus number one guy out of the portal? Yeah. One I mean, or two? Curtis basically just had the greatest day of his life when yeah. he committed. Um, but, no, I mean, that, that's huge. Like, the roster's really... I wouldn't say it's shaping up because we only have 
what, six players Half on it? Half the roster. Yeah, so I wouldn't want to say it's, like, shaping up, but, like, man, you've got – the foundation is, like, the finest, like, stone concrete mix you can have. Like, it is yeah. it is good. Still a ton of work to do, right. but – you can breathe that sigh of relief of that first five. And it's Those Cal, first five like, are taken care of. Like, John Calipari is, like, one of the best recruiters of all time. Like, he's not going to quit. Like, it's not no. going to – we're not going to go get a bunch of, like, Juco guys now. Like, there's no. going to be other big names rolling in, and that's it's going to be really exciting for sure. Very. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am also really quickly, like, really excited that we were going heavy on, on those transfer guys that have proven a college experience. Yes, absolutely. Because I think that was the biggest thing with – the, any naysayers within the cow hire is like, yay! Now we're gonna have a fifteen guys of freshmen. Right. It's just not. Yeah, I think he took this job knowing that he had to adapt a tad, but also that he was gonna have the funding to go get those transfer guys. Absolutely, and it's showing. I mean, they're already reporting John L. Davis is north of a mill. Yeah, and you know, can't say. I mean, that guy's a pro. Like he should be in the NBA draft yeah. for this cycle. Um, I don't think people quite understand that or get it yet, but he's going to come in and score a lot of points for the Hawks. Yeah. Uh, just across the sports world, obviously the NFL draft just took place. Uh, kind of went how you'd expect until the eighth pick where the Falcons it's took crazy. Michael Penix Jr. Yeah. Just a bizarre pick there. I uh, like that pick, though. Man, Why? it's ballsy. Why? Like, I, like I, I, I don't see I don't see how there's a positive Kurt's to not it. not going to be there. It feels super two, disrespectful they, to Kurt Cousins. But they signed them to a max deal. Like, I, I just, as an organization, I just, their their argument, they needed a corner. They were going to take a corner, didn't want to reach for one. Then they were going to do this, didn't want to reach for that. And then we go with the ultimate reach of signing, or with the eighth pick, selecting a 25-year-old quarterback. But now they're set until he's 40. I don't, it feels like the I kind just, of pick you make on Madden franchise. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I would have that. made that pick. <laughs> like I would have looked at the best available. Okay, well, Michael Penix Jr. is there. And then I would have picked him and ran read option and had backup quarterback as Kirk Cousins. But this isn't Madden. <laughs> Shout out to Cam Little and Bo Limmer for being yep. drafted. Yeah. Hogs getting drafted. About five picks apart from each other. Yeah. And to the playoffs, NBA playoffs, LeBron – Good to see they got swept. Was that did you think? That, you think that? Yeah. Uh, yes. Did they get swept? No, they no, they won they, one. They, they won one. Yeah, they four, four one. Yeah. And then the Thunder sweeping is huge. Yeah. Do you Thunder. think uh, LeBron just played his last game as a Laker? No. Yes. No. They're I think gonna, he, I think he did. Draft. Oh, he did. I think he's yeah. I think he's out of there. He's. I mean, where's yeah. he gonna go? Wherever. Bro. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere he wants. <laughs> Maybe I, he'll go to the Suns and like help KD out. There's no one who wouldn't take LeBron James. I feel like at this point, because. He's probably going to take a pretty big pay cut. Yeah, but and he, he's, he's at the point. He's at the point yeah. now. It's he, I don't think he's worried about. He's not worried about a max contract no, somewhere. He to, I think and he, he doesn't to deserve one. Yeah, I know. Hey, if you're LeBron, if you're watching the intern podcast, we'd um, love to have you on. First of all, one, yeah, obviously, come come join the show. Uh, the Mavericks, that'd be cool. Okay, that would be awesome. Um, not we sure we we'll use Bronny Junior as well. Yep, but uh, the Mavericks, that would be the scariest lineup in the world for the next segment parker did i hear you have a game we do have a game we have some trivia now i do want to preface this will be points based so the way it's going to work is we have eight questions here uh if you get the question right on the first try you get all three points if you need a hint you get two if you need two hints you get one no one gets it it's a scratch uh I will also say Daniel Shee's knowledge of Arkansas sports history is not as great as maybe ours, maybe, because he's only been here for two years. He's only been covering for two years. But I nope. did throw I did throw you a free, I threw you a freebie in here. Don't there worry. There you go. That'll yeah. make up. Renowned, renowned Angels and Mike Trout super fan. Which has been a rough tw- been last rough. 24 hours. But We had to break the news to Daniel in the press box last night. He did not know that Mike Trout needed knee surgery. I did not. I, I honestly he, thought you and Jackson had like... He completely thought I was messing I with I thought him. you and Jackson had... Or Jackson McAfee, who's over at Hog Sports now. I, I genuinely thought the two of you had, were in cahoots and like whispered to each other. We were not conspiring out, against you. you. You were going to do that. Because nope. we mess with each other all the time and... 
Yeah, that was that was rough. And then we'll back a little breaking news real quick. Adu Thoreau from Kentucky is in town. Okay. He's on a visit right now. Sign him up. Sign so him up. It's falling into place. All right, gentlemen. Go let's ahead. get into some trivia. So the first question I have here, and I feel like this one might be a little bit fair to Daniel because we did talk about this, and I know your memory is not great, but if you re- can remember, because we had a 15-minute long conversation about this, who was the Arkansas Razorbacks opening day first baseman in 2018? Oh, crap. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, uh, Matt is or Azale. Uh, or not, not Matt, but um. Gates either. 2018. If anyone needs a hint, I can I can throw one out. I don't, I don't want to everyone's going to take the hint the here. Point. He is now a well. I'm not sure if he's still up. He is a major league pitcher. Isaiah Campbell. No. Nope. I remember this conversation. I know, but I I knew this would happen. Yes, but he has pitched in a major league game. Yes, as made, his, made his first career start last year, I believe, for the Washington Nationals. Oh my gosh! Oh, Evan Lee. Bingo. There we go. Evan Lee. Yeah. Two points for the man, Landon. Okay, moving on. Wow, he, play, he, he played. He started at first on opening. He was day. the opening day first baseman. Wow. He was pinch hit for by I believe McFarland and Gates in that game. Oh, Forgot shout out to McFarland. Heck yeah. Um, okay, this one, I think you guys are going to need probably some, some significant hints, so I'll give you a free hint on this one. What school did Frank Broyles play for in college? He played college football for this school. It was in the ACC. Georgia Tech. Bingo. Bingo. How'd you know that? Does that lose a hint? Yeah, uh, yeah that, you just got two points. <laughs> I, knew that, I, I knew that years ago. I don't know. Oh, gotcha. God, they're going to put the scoreboard across our names, and I'm just going to be stone-faced for this entire show. You're going to have the Arkansas Friday night offense line. Just right, zeros. exactly. Zero. Nothing. Well, the, I think the next one, <laughs> the next one is, uh, you sh- if you don't get this, Daniel, I don't know what to tell you. Who leads the Los Angeles Angels in batting average? Right now? Yep. As of this morning. This is Joe Adele. Bingo. Which I still don't know how that happened. But yeah, kind of wild, huh? Good for him. Could have gotten that. Yeah, no. What made you a What made you a Angels fan? Well, I, I'll tell this story. Uh, So my family hates baseball. Okay. Just absolutely abhors baseball, and I'll get texts from my dad like, "Why are you still at bomb at eleven o'clock at night?" I have to explain. Um. But so I kind of had free reign to pick because I had no, you know, connection to anything. And long story short, right around the time that Trout came up was around the time that I really got into baseball. And, you know, as a 10-year-old, you pick things irrationally. I'm sure I thought his last name was funny. I mean, I wish I could go back into my 10-year-old brain and think and they were actually pretty good that year they mm-hmm. made the ds that year got swept by the royals do you know where trout played double a ball hey there we go that was at uh it's not where they have it now right it wasn't different Rockets. organization different organization mm-hmm. but yeah same now. same town same that's town. uh or city. alabama right nah no. little rock arkansas travelers yeah north little rock those I mean, were, I think he was only there like two or three weeks. Those yeah, were the most yeah, packed yeah, games Wyndham ever. There much longer. Now he's, because Julio Rodriguez just came up from there. Now they have the Mariners. Right. No. Okay, I hope you guys can get this one. Daniel, I don't know if you'll know this. Who, sorry, not who. What was the original mascot of the University Cardinals. of Arkansas? Gosh. Mm, I, I was trying to let him finish We need the question, Jeopardy Will. buzzers is what we need. Yeah. There we go. But is it, it is a free-for-all, to be fair to win. I did know that, but there's no shot I would have beaten him to. I feel like, okay. Daniel, I think you can get this one. Before coming to Arkansas to play, where did DVH hail from? Nebraska. Nebraska, but. Nope, in his playing years. Oh. Waco, Texas. Um, can we get a specific McLennan school name? College. Bingo. That Three is insane. Points. <laughs> That's <laughs> insane pool. Because I wrote a 1,500-word story. I was going to say, I'm that sure he's written about it. Yeah, okay. that. Me and Landon. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, well, he coached at Texarkana Junior or Community College. Okay, this one's going to take a little bit of digging. Can you guys name, can anyone name at least three, and you'll get bonus points if you can name four or five, three of the five hogs on the Arkansas baseball roster who are from the Kansas City area? Kendall Diggs. 
Ty Wilmswire. Uh. Does he not count? He's from he's from Springfield. Ross Lovich. He's from Springfield. Yeah. Oops. Ross Lovich would be my There's next. Two. Stone Hewlett. Mm. See, not he and Kendall he, were together. He is. Yeah, he is. So my question okay. is, do I is give he... you the three points? Oh, you just give us all. Oh well, yeah, one. all one point. Yeah, okay. all one. We point. all collectively had one. So I talked to Stone's two parents more. in Alabama, and they said Kendall and Stone knew each other growing up. There's two more, both pitchers. Both pitchers. Not pretty tired. I believe one is from Olathe, and the other is from. Is a uh, Faherty? Is he from there? I thought he was too, but he's not. I, I think he's I from could Texas. Have swore he was. Um, it's gonna be someone crazy. Do, do, any hands needed? I don't, I don't get it. Is yeah. it Tate McGuire? Tate McGuire. Yeah. Let's There's one about. more. A guy you'll see on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Bybee. Bybee. And Bybee. Bingo. I'm really. So it's gonna be. Let's see. That explains why, like, literally half the dugout emptied in about three minutes. I think the day that they had a scrimmage on was the AFC Championship or Super Bowl game. Oh, they they just, <laughs> they just it's, all cleared it's out. The most hilarious thing is usually they'll stick around and fool around in the dugout after the scrimmages, but they were, they booked it, and Dave looked at us for like three seconds on the field because post game and scrimmages are done on the field. He looked at us, goes, "Y'all need me." We go, no, you're good. <laughs> he sprints up to his office because he didn't want to miss the kickoff. Uh. Okay, next question. Our first basketball, first and only basketball question. Who is the all-time assist leader for the Arkansas Razorbacks? 749 career assists. It's someone that I don't think was known for. How old is he? Okay, yeah, can 40, we get a decade? That 48 he year, he's 48 years old, so he would have played, what, 28 years ago? 20. So late nineties. You lost me. I'm gonna keep quiet because I'm. No guess. You player, don't want to sound stupid. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah. figured this would be a hard one. I thought. Just this give might... me. A, can I get a hint before I give up? Uh, where is he from? He's from. He's from New York. Uh, oh, we were. Uh, here's a hint. We were just talking. We were just. Referencing the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, similar name to their head coach, perhaps. Yeah, um, I was U.S. Reed. No, it, it's it's R E E D. Uh, Todd, no, it's R E I D. R E I D. Okay, yeah, you got it. Kareem Reed. Kareem Reed. Mm. That was cool. a tough one. And the last one, all-time leader. And Arkansas receiving yards. So we're going football here. Daniel, anything? I feel like it's updated. Mm. It's not Marcus Monk. It's it is not. I believe not, he was third. Um, we'll go Kobe Hamilton. Ooh. Same same era or same yeah. squad. It's very similar era. Jerry's right. Bingo. Yeah. Warren. Yeah, no Warren boy. Needed. Oh boy, okay, we've got a race here. All right, so that's our eight questions. Like, yeah. Let's do some math. In first place, maybe you could say shockingly, Daniel Shee. Wow. Just all because of that McLennan pool. All because of the McLennan pool. Yes. Daniel Shee with talk, nine I points. I actually talked to the McLennan head coach for yeah. that story. You should. And yeah, and uh, he, what did he say? He said uh, he drove by the campus and there was only one car in the lot. Like he had heard something from like somebody that knew Dave and there was only one car in the lot and turns out it was Dave that had driven up from Kansas City to a uh, to just meet him on this, like, community college in Waco. That's crazy. Just just kind of how those old school stories go. And he was offered a scholarship, I think, at the parking lot or wow. there thereabouts. That's awesome. If you think about the difference of how scholarships are offered today. Yeah. You know, it's a very different uh, system. Very different world, yes. 
So Daniel is the winner of the first Who intern pod <laughs> trivia. God. In second place is Will with eight points. And Landon, you round us out with six. Man. I guess I got last because I had zero points, technically. You did a great job hosting. That Alex Kareem, Trebek. That Kareem Thank Reed. you. Did I do my best, Alex Brutal. Trebek? Yes. In person? Yeah. You think so? Okay, mm-hmm. good. That's, uh, that's about as good of a, a compliment as you can receive. So, uh, well, our, our last little bit here is just kind of a Arkansas baseball state of the union, but we already kind of did that. Yeah. Um, yeah, just going on the road this weekend to Kentucky. I feel good about it. Daniel, Two out of three. Daniel, how do you feel about it? Because we haven't talked about this yet. How do I feel about what? Just the Kentucky. Team and, oh, Kentucky. Like, how do, we, how, do we, how do you feel about maybe – the matchup. I don't know how much you know about Kentucky. I think I think they'll be all right in Kentucky. I agree. I really do. I agree. You know, but Texas A and M. We've been over this, but yeah, we're scared. We, I would be terrified. Um. So yeah. Uh, baseball's rolling. Basketball's rolling. Football. Mm, I don't know if you'd say they're rolling. I mean. Sure. Football's chugging along. They're chugging mm-hmm. along. Like the, the moving along like the Polar Express. The train engine is moving. But please tell me we all got that reference. <laughs> the Polar Express reference? Yes. Of course. What a great childhood Good movie. Christmas movie. Yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. That will do it. Daniel, thank you for joining us today. Joining we us. hope to have you back very soon. Yeah, don't uh, avoid us anymore. Yeah. What come on. We don't man. know if John will let me back in. Yeah. After that's the, true. Yeah. He'll see the he'll he'll see what we've produced. We had to hold no, Daniel and, and John apart because yes. they were trying to fist fight when he came in. Exactly. Um, but yeah, folks, that's uh, it's that's gonna it. do it for us here at the intern pod at Natty State Sports. Uh, we will hopefully see you next week. Maybe we'll see what happens. More special guests on the way. Yeah, more special yeah. guests on the, the way. Hopefully, that are far more relevant and oh, entertaining come on. than myself. <laughs> Who don't hide behind bylines like Daniel Sheen? Oh, we yes, exactly, <laughs> precise. Well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, Woo Pig. We will see you next time. Woo Pig.